Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video, I'll probably make a lot of cuts in and out to show different processes. So please bear with me. I'm also following my notes here so I don't leave anything out. And I'm trying to keep this video short. This video is all about trying to organize our router bit somehow. In my shop, I collect a lot of odd router bits for various jobs that I do, as many of us do. And we start with the basic router set, like this one from Lowe's that I got. And it's about a hundred bucks from Lowe's. It's a bunch of router bits that I'll, you get a lot of bits, but probably a lot of them I won't use. And they're all quarter inch shanks. Um, as I go on here and learn more, and do more things, I would like to use some half-inch shanks. So I'm working on converting what I need to half-inch shanks for more stability and less vibration and safer. I have tried various organization methods. There's a lot of great ideas out here and in the magazines and everywhere else on how to organize your bits. And not one process is a fit-all uh, process. So you have to kind of do what works for you. Obviously, just tossing bits in a drawer is not good. They bang around together, that nicks up the card by cutters, which affects the quality of your cuts and profiles. As you may know, card by cutters are brittle and they're easy to chip and break if they're dropped or banged. So we need to organize and protect our router bits. Now there's a lot of ways to do that. Some are formal and some are not so formal. Some are easy and very simple. I use what suits my needs but it's not always pretty. Recently, I started using these Rockler router bit storage inserts. This is an item number 57223 for $7.99 for a 10 pack. And I bought three of these packs. These hold quarter inch and half inch shanks. I like these, but time will tell. I'll see how they work. So let me show or describe to you a few of the methods I've tried before. Now I've tried solid styrofoam and just making holes in this to hold my bits in place. This is available at the big box store, just uh, some solid styrofoam insulation. And the problem I found with this and with NDF is that these hold some moisture and that tends to brush the shanks on my router bits. That's not a good idea. Uh, just drilling holes directly into some MDF to fit the size of your bits. You know, that's another idea too, but then again, that holds moisture from the humidity in the air and that creates some rust in your router bit shanks. So next I tried cutting up some strips of plastic, uh, some cutting boards from Walmart that I got. I like this cutting board. This one's been cut up a bit. I cut these lengths here and I get these kind of uh, things here where I can store router bits on. And that works pretty well. Well, it's a bit tedious and stuff, but it does give me some options to uh, kind of custom fit some things like this uh, setup guide here I can set up. I cut that out with my scroll saw so to fit this and hold that in place. It works good for that, but it's not really a good cure-all for everything either. Now on these router bit holders that I've made before, I've got a video on that, how I did those, and I'll put a link to that below in case you want to take a look at that. As you can see also on these, I label what these bits are here. I've got all these little labels on there. And I've got a previous video just before this one actually, where I show how I do all this labeling in my shop. If I don't label my rudder bits, uh, I'm gonna forget what they are, what they do and so forth. That's a lot of different specialty uh, router bits to try and keep track of and trying to remember what they do for you. You can guess a lot of times on a lot of them, but not all of them are that obvious. Now I'm going to reset my camera here to give you a better view. Okay, so recently I started using these Rockler router bit inserts and these fit quarter inch and half inch shanks. And these inserts are made of silicon, so they protect your shanks from moisture. On the plastic cutting boards, I was drilling holes specific to the bit shank size. There's no option to change your mind if you want to change it. You either toss the piece or start over or modify the holes if you can. Now with these Rockler inserts, I figure out how many bits I want to organize on a board. 
Typically, I'm using MDF, but the Rockler inserts will protect from absorbing moisture from the humidity. Now, as with these two here that I've done recently, I put seven bits on them. I made these boards 12 inches long, and to get even centers on these, I divided the 12 inches by eight to get seven centers for the number of bits I want to put on here. And that comes out to be at one and a half inch centers for each bit. Now what you do is you get yourself a construction calculator, such as I have here, and you can uh, calculate all the stuff, fractional calculations. I've also got the same calculator on my smartphone. I think it's about an extra 15 bucks for that. But it's very handy when I'm at different locations and don't happen to always remember to have my calculator along. I usually have my phone with me though. And I've got the Construction Master 5 calculator. So that's how we compute our holes and other divisions. If you want to have six bits or holes to make, divide your length by seven. Always divide by one more than the number of holes or divisions that you need. That'll give you even spacing along the whole length. Now on this, I cut a three quarter inch piece of MDF the two inches wide and 12 inches long. Then I mark this to make a center line along the length with the center finding ruler. A center finding ruler is much like this one here, where it's got a zero and then numbers out on each side from that zero. And use that as finding your center mark on a piece of board. Then with my center marks, I drew a straight line all the way down and use that for lining up where I'm gonna put all my drill marks and center marks for drilling my holes. Then I measured inch and a half for each of the centers on that and used my scribe to indent the hole there so my drill bit can find its center on that and not wander off on me. And I got that center finding ruler from woodsmithshop.com. I think they're probably available from a lot of resources. Now I drilled these holes to 5 8 inch as per the instructions for the inserts. I also cut a piece of quarter inch MDF and cut that to four inches wide and to 12 inches long. And that'll give me a base for this to sit on to give it more stability. Now after cutting these and drilling this, I glued these pieces together and that just holds really well just with the glue. So now I can press the inserts into place. I'll just take an insert, press it in place. It's a snug fit. And you can put the bit in. This one's a half inch shank. You can see some of these are quarter inch shanks. And that holds them very securely. Now, let's say if I want to redesign this stuff, I can pull this out. I just take a little flat tip screwdriver here, work it up a little bit around the edges. And I can pull that insert back out again. Now the seven bits that I'm going to be putting on this board and the one I made before are made up of two roundover bits and a straight chamfer bit and a set of four straight bits which are in this box here. Now you may look here and you see that I have several straight bits already. However, these have upper and lower bearings on them and these will not make dados or grooves for me, even with removing the bearings. That is why I need this extra set. And this extra set is also in addition to my plywood straight bits, which are on here. The plywood straight bits are a 32nd of an inch smaller than your standard dimension. And these bits are standard dimensions for when using with solid woods. Solid woods have standard dimension to it, whereas plywood is a 32nd of an inch thinner. Now these four bits here came in this uh, beautiful case. It looks like a curly maple or something. However, I need a better organization than a bunch of pretty cases sitting around my shop. So I make my bit holders like I do here. Now perhaps I'll repurpose this uh, pretty case here into something else like a small jewelry box or something. And as you can see, I've labeled my bits so I know what they are and I won't forget what they are for. Well, as you can see, there are many ways to organize your router bits. Some are beautiful, some are more functional. You'll have to see what works for you. So, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like and share it with your family, friends, and fellow craftspersons. Also, please subscribe and be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss anything. 
Also, greatly appreciate your comments. I want to know what you think and what you want to see. If you want to make a private comment, you can send it to me at garysoutdoors1 at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description below. So, if the ladies don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Thank you.